this video will start having a look at a concept called completing the square. We'll use this concept to complete some factorization, um, but first we're just going to have a look at what do we mean by completing the square. So we're working towards being able to factorize by completing a square, and when we use this method we would normally have three terms that we cannot factorize using any other method. When we refer to completing the square, we'll normally have an expression that contains an x squared plus bx. So it might be x squared plus 3x, x squared plus 9x, x squared plus 5x. And what we can do is we can complete the square. We complete the square by identifying our b value. So if it was x squared plus 3, our b value would be 3. And then we take that b value and we divide it by 2. And then we can write our expression as x plus that b divided by 2 value in brackets, which is squared, and then we take away our b minus 2 value that we are squaring. So we can complete the square by taking our b value and dividing it by 2, and then writing x plus b divided by 2 squared minus b divided by 2 squared. Now the subtraction, when we take away our b divided by 2 squared, is always going to be a subtraction. Whereas our operation sign in our bracket will vary depending on what is in the original expression. It might be an adding or it might be subtracting. It will take the form based on the original expression. So let's have a look at a couple of examples to see how this looks in practice. In the first example, we want to complete the square for the expression, which is x squared plus 6x. So the first step is to write it and complete the square. So my b value is going to be 6. So I take my b value of 6 and put it in. So it's going to be in brackets x plus 6 over 2. And then that is going to be squared minus 6 over 2 squared. So by writing that I have completed the square. But I also need to simplify to be able to finish my answer. So looking at it I know that 6 divided by 2 is going to equal to 3. So instead of writing 6 over 2. I can write x plus 3 squared minus 3 squared because I'm simplifying my fraction because I can do that division and then 3 squared is going to be 9. So I can write it as x plus 3 squared minus 9 and that has completed the square for the expression of x squared plus 6x. Now what I can do to check that if I expanded x plus 3 squared minus 9 I want to see if I can we'll get back to my original x squared plus 6x. So let's have a look to see whether it actually checks out. So starting off with x plus 3 squared minus 9, and as I go ahead and complete my distribution, I can use the FOIL method because I've got x plus 3, x plus 3. So it'll be x times x plus x times 3 plus 3 times x plus 3 times 3. I'm still going to have my subtract 9. So then going ahead and simplifying, it's going to be x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9, and then my minus 9 stays on the end. So continuing to simplify, x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 9, and that leaves me with x squared plus 6x, which is what I started off with, my original expression, before I completed the square. So as you can see that we are not changing the value of our expression. By completing the square, we're just writing it in a different form. So let's have a look at a second example. This time I want to complete the square for x squared minus 8x. So I'm going to complete the square by identifying my b value. My b value is going to be 8. So substituting that in, it is going to be x minus 8 over 2 squared. Because remember, in the brackets, the operation sign follows what is originally in the expression. So x minus 8 divided by 2 squared. And then I'm going to subtract 8 divided by 2 squared. So now I can go and simplify. So 8 divided by 2 is going to be 4. So it's going to be x minus 4 squared minus 4 squared. And 4 squared is going to be 16. So it's x minus 4 squared minus 16. So there were a couple of examples when we had an even number for our b value. But what if it's an odd number? 
because as we know, an odd number cannot be divided by two. So let's have a look at completing the square for x squared minus five x. So I'm going to follow the same process. My b value is going to be five. So substituting in my b value of five, it is going to be x minus five divided by two squared, and then minus five divided by two squared. Now five divided by two squared is gonna give me 2.5, and I want to avoid using decimals at this stage. So I'm gonna leave it as a fraction of five divided by two. That's for inside of my first set of brackets. For my second set of brackets where, where I am squaring five divided by two, what I can do is I can remove that bracket by squaring five and squaring two. So five squared is 25 and two squared is four. So instead of subtracting five divided by two squared, I can subtract 25 over four. So writing my answer, it is going to be x minus five divided by two squared, that stays the same, minus 25 divided by four. And that's where I leave it for this completion of the square. So having a look at one last example, I've got x squared plus 11x. So completing the square, my b value is going to be 11. So it is going to be x plus 11 divided by two squared, and then minus 11 divided by two squared on the end. Now, because 11 is an odd number, I cannot divide it by two, but I can remove my last set of brackets by squaring both my 11 and my two. So my simplified answer is gonna be x plus 11 divided by two squared, and then minus 121 over four. So there's some examples of what do we mean when we say we are going to complete the square. Next, we'll have a look at how do we use this completing the square method to be able to factorize a set of three terms.